morning, church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 I'd like to take a second to say good morning to all you beautiful people. Uh, whether you're worshiping with us live this morning, if you're on Facebook Live, if you're listening on our phone lines, or if you're watching us on the computer on our uh website. But I'd just like to say good morning and thank you for worshiping with us this day. Thank you. Uh, we have a we have a very special occasion this day, which is Father's Day. Amen. Amen. And um, I'd just like to take a second to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers in the building. Amen. All of the fathers in the building. Yeah, yeah. And a very special Happy Father's Day to our Father. Yeah. 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 Our Father. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We couldn't ask for a better father. We couldn't ask for a better one. This morning we're going to. Um, Start off with our doxology, uh, praise team. Oh, oh man, these lovely ladies, they not praise team. <laughs> oh, but uh, we have our youth and young adult choir this morning. And we're going to start off with our doxology and then we'll go into our morning hymn. Amen. 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 You all will join us.
ask uh, Reverend Cook if he would bless us with a prayer. <clears throat> Those of you who have your Bibles, if you would, turn with me to the book of Psalms. I'm going to go to the first, uh, we're going to go to chapter 37 and verse 23. <clears throat> when you have it with you, will please stand to your feet for the reading of God's word. morning from the NIV version, and it reads, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young, and now I am old. Yet I have never seen a righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Mm -hmm. They are always generous and lend free. Their children will be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. Yeah. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land mm -hmm. and dwell in it forever. The mouths of the righteous are the wisdom mm -hmm. and their tongues Speak what is just. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. Amen? Amen. Amen. And as you know, God's word has already been blessed. Reverend uh, Cook, if you would, please bless us with a prayer. Good morning, church. Good morning. If we could, before we pray, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yeah. He woke us all up this morning. Yeah. He allowed us to be a part of his holy yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. He sheds his grace upon us every day. Thank you. Gracious Father, yeah. all holy and wise God, the creator of all heavens, yes. the keeper of our souls. Uh -huh. We give you honor and glory right now, Lord God, yes. knowing that there is no one like you, no. that you have all the answers that we need. Yes. You are the great shepherd, yes. and we thank you. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done in our lives up to this moment. We thank you now, Father, for the things that you will do that we don't even know that you have already ordained to be done. Father, we magnify you. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, let your spirit fall, Lord, fresh. Fall, fall fresh, Lord, upon us. Not only on us, Lord, but on all your children, Lord, no matter where they are in this world. For they are yours and you have chose them. And we thank you. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, those that have not sought you out, Lord, let us go out into the world, Lord. For it's time to pick the harvest. That we can speak to those, Lord, that do not belong to you and have them come to you, O Lord. But let us speak your word, Lord, to each and every one. Let it prick their heart, O Lord. That it shall be watered. That it shall grow and nurture that they shall call upon your holy name, Lord. 
Father, we ask you if there are any that are sick this day, touch them, Father. Let them be healed in the name of Jesus. We claim you right now in the name of Jesus that a healing shall fall upon them like no other. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus that if anyone has any aches or pains, any problems, Lord, whether it be financial, children, spouses, jobs, go before them, O oh Lord. Fix the situation. For you said, O oh Lord, in your word that you will go before us and prepare the way. And we thank you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that each and every one this day glorifies you. That you touch each and every father, Lord. For Father, today is Father's Day and each father has partaken a part in the birth of bringing a child in this world. And we ask you, Father, that you anoint them. Let them know, Lord, that they are loved. That they are not forgotten. And we pray, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will touch the speakers, Lord, this day. For whomsoever is bringing forth your word, let it be a word straight from heaven, Lord. A word that will touch each and every one in every way that you desire for it to be touched. For you said, Lord, that your word would not return unto you void. And we claim it right now in the name of Jesus that it shall be so. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
know that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper because God is the help. But then he, he, the song gives you a responsibility. Ain't that right? It says, you fight on me. I want to tell you that before I start, having done all the stand, therefore stand. Y'all hear me now? Having your Lord's girl about the truth. Don't you give up today. This is not the day to give up. Amen. Sickness, don't give up. Trouble home, don't give up. Struggles, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You fight on. Yeah. I sure hate to bring y'all down off of that highlight. Hallelujah. But I got to do it. I want to say before I start that we're still praying because we're the church. That's what we do. We pray for people, one another, not just those in the church, but we pray for the world, amen, that God's will will be done. That's what we pray for. So I'm praying this morning for uh, my neighbors, uh, Skip the Grafton Reed, his wife, uh, Thelma. Praying for my friend, Brother Dwight Wade and his wife, Sonia. Praying for my friend, Cornell Austin. We've been in the hospital for a long time. But thank God, amen, his wife was able to go get him, and he was able to come home. Amen. Thank God. Still, that's his prayer. Still praying for my friend and brother, Jimmy Petit. Amen. Praying for Clement Fuller. Praying for Reverend Joe Miles at the loss of his father. Amen. Praying now for uh, Sister Cheryl Allen and Sister Chloe Enoch at the loss of uh, Sister Pam Price, amen. We would keep the Allen Price, amen, Troxler Enoch family in prayer. We're praying now for our own brother Jeffrey Cook at the loss of his niece Ashley, amen, and her father, Dr. Michael Cook. We're going to keep them in prayer, amen, as well as his mother and his father, amen, Jeffrey and Janet Cook. We will keep them in prayer. Amen. We're praying now for uh, uh, Sister Mary, the wife of Brother Slim. Amen. The loss of her brother, uh, her and Ponzella, uh, uh, Mr. Turner's wife, had to go to New York to take care of some business. So we're praying their safety. Amen. And their, their safe travels back home. And we are praying for one another. Ain't that right? So don't think I forgot you. Amen. I'm praying for you. Amen. No matter what you're going through, I'm praying for you. Amen. Because God is able. Uh, we also, um, let the youth have gathered together a little bit. Let's give them a hand clap of praise for the ones who did come. This is the time to get these babies back in the church. Amen. Get these babies. Amen. Let them play sports. Let them do academics. That's all good. Get them back in the house of the Lord where we can train them up. Amen. And get their minds solid and get their hearts purified before they go out to this meaningful world. Amen. Give us the opportunity to do what God has called us to do. Let's get these babies back in church. Amen. 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 I'm not weak on it. Amen. 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 We've also been still collecting the food. Amen. And, uh, I thank you, Minister Seward, for doing such a great job. You, 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 you've done a spectacular work. Amen. But now we need to get together and have a meeting and figure out how we're going to distribute um, this food, amen. And we just, to me, I think we just need to come and just put it in a box and just whoever come, let them come and get it, amen. And when it's out, it's out, amen. Don't go out talking about who come through the line and got it, amen. Just let them get it, amen, and enjoy it in Jesus' name. I said what I said because I know church folk. I said what I said, meant what I said. Who's going to waste down there? People still hungry, amen. Let that scalp them. Uh, also, the, uh, some of the youth and young adults got together. I know all of you didn't, but just, just a few. Uh, Mr. Cooks, Thompson, different ones who, this is the time of year where we collect. Um, we collect for uh, back to school. Amen. I know they're not going back yet, but we need to start getting supplies. Amen. And get things ready for these children when they go back to school so that no one will be laughing. Ain't that right? There ain't nothing like going back to school and you really don't have nothing. I'm getting ready to didn't even know we were poor until I got old and <laughs> I didn't even realize. But God always saw fit, amen, to, to bless me through other people. And so I think it would be fitting as we become a blessing. All right, y'all didn't come here to hear the Bible. Y'all come here to hear the preach, didn't you? Well, this is the day the Lord has made. Yeah, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' name. If you will, I want you to meet me. Where am I going? All right, Book of Acts. What chapter? 
Step two. Amen. Somebody be listening. Uh, go to verse 22 through verse 24. Amen. Acts chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 22 through 24. Amen. Amen. And you find your, your Bibles. Amen. I mean, and when you turn them on or open them up. Amen. Still want to remember Cynthia Parker, Sister Erica Rochelle, my friend Jack Garner. Amen. Still keeping uh, Reverend uh, Benny Petit uh, in prayer. And uh, my own uh, uh, mama, Mildred Moody. We're going to keep her in prayer. Ain't that right? Amen. And I hear her come back through these doors and lift up her hands and say, hey, man. <laughs> Amen. And also, uh, uh, Brother Don Slade, Sister Yvette, and Sister Betty Ten. Amen. Let's keep them in our prayers. Uh, Book of Acts, y'all there? Chapter 2, verse 21. I'm reading from the NIV uh, this morning. Uh, verse 23 said, um, this man, no, I'm sorry, verse 22. People of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man credited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him. As you yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep hold on him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you today, God, and we honor your presence. Thank you, God, for the beautiful praise that the choir put out, and that the preacher participated in, and the musicians, God, with their wonderful gifts who have blessed us, God, as we watch and witness you move from heart to heart and breast to breast. And whatever the saints went through during the week, God, somehow, some way, they had a smile on their face and joy in their heart. So now, God, you have ordained such a time as this for preaching moment. I ask you, God, you would bless me, the least of your saints, and give me strength and clarity of focus. And until I can preach your gospel clear and unadulterated, until people change, amen, until we get better, uh, until we act better toward one another, until we begin to live the life that you called us to do and walk in the light of him, Jesus Christ. Father, now my prayer is that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart I pray, O oh God, has been acceptable in your sight. For truly, O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I do pray. Let the faithful of God say, Amen. Amen. This wonderful Father's Day. Country is divided. We know that. We don't have to. Country is still divided. Amen. I heard some men say it's not as bad as it used to be, but it's not as good as it ought to be. That's what I'm going to add that on. Sonora Dodd was one who, on June 9, 19, 1910, she wanted to honor her father, a Civil War soldier. So what she did on his birthday, which was June 5th, she wanted to honor him. And she did. She honored him. But then she went to the ministerial council in Smokane, Washington, because she wanted to uh, make it a, a legalized holiday. She wanted to spread the joy, amen, and to honor those who were fathers, amen. 1972, Richard Nixon was the one who uh, uh, gave the mandate and made Father's Day a legal holiday, amen. I want to tell you now that, that Father's Day and Mother's Day is important, amen, but it's God who has ordained both, amen. Yes. Father's is the paternal uh, person of the family, amen. Notice I said the paternal person of the family, amen. And a whole lot of people are fathers, and they're not to see people be, be mad with their fathers because their fathers weren't in their life, amen. And they but they didn't really miss the point. Some folks have fathers and dads, amen. <laughs> their father biologically got them into this world through the seed he was carrying in his lawns, amen. But daddy made sure there was food on the table. Then you had some fathers who were both. They was father and dad. Amen. That's just the grace of God. It didn't mean one man was better than the other man. It just something happened, amen, along the way where that man wasn't able to stay at home, amen. But yet, I want to tell you today, uh, we always talk about women, amen, and how if it wasn't for mama, you wouldn't be here. Well, let me flip that. If it wasn't for daddy, you wouldn't be here either. 
They thought I'd throw that in right there for free. But Father's Day is important. And what a father does, a father protects his home. Amen. The father is the one who uh, is an example to his children. And sometimes it's good and bad. Amen. Y'all ever seen a good father? Amen. When somebody says, I want to be just like that. Amen. They want to do everything daddy do. They follow their daddy's footsteps. Dad is teaching them along the way. Is that right? And then some people have to turn over dad. Amen. A rolling stone. Amen. And they say, I don't want to be nothing like that. Amen. I ain't going to walk like that. I ain't going to talk like that. I ain't going to lie like that. I ain't going to drink like that. I don't want to be like that. But guess what? You still look like that. <laughs> Best dad in the world is God the Father. God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. God the Father who knew who we were before the foundation of the world. God the Father that sent him Jesus Christ to die on the cross that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Don't act like you don't want to hear me out there because I'll take the other mic and come out there and talk to you this morning. While you was lying, Christ died for you. While you was smoking cigarettes, Christ died for you. While you act like you didn't know who we were, eating food, bourbon at the table, and they said your prayer, Christ died for you. And so the, the subject I want, because that's all y'all want. Y'all just so trained to hear the text, and y'all so trained to hear a topic. Just gotta have a topic. And by the time you get out of church, y'all don't bit won't know what the topic is and anything in the world. But just cause you want one, I'm gonna appease you this morning. My topic this morning is who's the man? Look at somebody and say, who's the man? Anybody? And then before I leave here, that's that's my whole assignment this morning, is to let you know who the man is. Amen. And before I start, I'm going to tell you who the man is not. Michael Thompson is not the man. Amen. I didn't die for you. Amen. I sure can't live for you. Amen. I can give you a little something, but I can't need all your need. If you sick, I can come back and visit in the house. Well, but I can't touch you and make you raise up off your sick bed. Amen. If your children act like a war, I can talk to them and give them counsel, but I can't turn their heart around. Amen. To their mothers or their fathers. I can't do that. But I know a man. I know a man. Says that in this text we're talking about in the book of Acts, the writer of the book is Dr. Luke. Everybody ought to know that, right? The writer of the gospel of Luke, the one who he walked with Jesus. Amen. He, he knew who Jesus was. Amen. He, 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 he penned the book of Luke. Amen. In the book of Luke, he talked about a lot of miracles that Jesus did. And in the book of Acts, he continued on to let folk know that even though Jesus died, he resurrected. Amen. And when his resurrection came, he came back to earth through the power of the Spirit of God. And now greater work shall we do because the Spirit of God is on the inside of us. So the same work that Jesus did, we're supposed to be able to do by the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's still telling you that you, even though you can do those things, you still not the man. Amen. You not the woman. Amen. Until God steps on the inside of you to help you, you can't take credit for what God does. Amen. Because you know like I know in your pre-cross days, amen, you wouldn't have done nothing for nobody. And if you did something for somebody, you couldn't wait to tell other folk what you did for them so you could get credit for it. But my Bible says to God be the glory. Amen. No matter what happens to God be the glory. That's who the man is. That's who the man is. The man Christ Jesus. That's who the man is. Yeah. Dr. Luke tells us in his book the Holy Spirit came and there was audio visual before Jeff technology even came out rather. The audio was that they heard a rushing sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. So the creator not only was the audio, they had video. Y'all don't believe me? And they said that they saw, <laughs> they saw cloven tongues as iron. Amen. And they was watching that dead screen, the screen, and cloven tongues and fire came down, and they saw the Holy Ghost began to move. And men was waiting for the tablet for the promise of the Father to come to the church. Church's birth in Acts chapter 2. Told you last week that Brother Peter came and he stood up. After God brought him through all the things he brought him through. And see, y'all still sit out there. They still sit out there looking at me like they're crazy. 
Last week I told y'all that Peter stood up with boldness because the Holy Ghost came on him and he had confessed his sin and God saved him. Ain't that right? But before that, Peter was cussing, Peter was cutting, Peter was telling the Lord what to do. Y'all know y'all the same way when I was the same way when I first got into church, amen, and I got saved. I was trying to go back to the neighborhood to rescue everybody. I was going to tell everybody who Jesus was because wasn't nobody living right but me. And I was going to tell everybody they need to come to church because wasn't nobody doing right but me. Amen. I was going to tell every man, you need to take care of your family because ain't nobody take care of their family but me. Amen. You need to go to work. Amen. And come off these streets because ain't nobody working but me. But Jesus reminded me that one day you wasn't working. Amen. One day when you was working, you wasn't even doing right with your money. I want to tell you that one day you wasn't living right. Amen. And if it had not been for the Lord, amen, you'd still be out there in the street. And I had to recognize that I was the man. But now I know the man from Galilee. But the act says that he said something going to happen in the last days. Last days was when Jesus died on the cross. Then he resurrected. When he came, it was the beginning of the last days. Y'all still don't know what the last days is? We're complaining about everything that we see going on. The only thing, the only reason we see that it's going on is because news is Luke 24-7. And we don't just have to wait to call somebody while you're calling somebody else's emailing and texting, ain't that right? And let folk know what's going on around the world. So news, you can get it just like that, ain't that right? But see, what's going on in this book here, Peter had to stand up and talk. Peter had to stand up and preach. And I want to tell you that the first act of the church was preaching of the gospel. Y'all don't believe, look, the last days men should be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Men and women love themselves, but they do not love God. You don't believe me? Ask somebody to give a sacrifice for the house of the Lord and the people of the Lord, and you will find out that where the treasure of a man is, that's where his heart is. Amen. They'll say they love the Lord until it's time to give. They'll say they love the Lord until it's time to forgive. Amen. And that's how you'll know them. You'll know so now, book of Acts said in the last days that God will pour out his flesh on all men and women. You have men who stand up in ecclesiastical roles, who have all kinds of degrees, who tell you that women don't have any time to say anything. Amen. Because they don't have anything to say. Because men don't always stand up and say it. Won't they say that? And then rich men will stand up and act like they're the only ones that can get to heaven. Because poor men and old people won't listen to a man if he ain't got nothing. I wish I had somebody. Even in Ecclesiastes tell you that. And then my father will tell you that. That people won't listen to a poor man even though wisdom is in his mouth. I'm telling you today that God has blessed us here in the book of Acts. And I want to break it down, but I don't want to stay before you long, but I'm going to stay before you long enough. Verse 22, let's look at it right here. Uh, uh, in verse 22, it's going to talk about the life of Christ. Okay? Write it down in your Bibles or put it, make up a note if you're electronic. Verse 22 talks about the life of Christ. Verse 23 talks about the death of Christ. And verse 24 talks about the resurrection of Christ. Do y'all know what that is? That is the gospel in a nutshell. Yeah. That is the gospel that we preach. That he lived a sinless life. That he died on Calvary's cross. Yeah. And that he rose on resurrection ground. Yeah. And after a certain amount of days, he ascended back to heaven at the right hand of the Father. That is the gospel in a nutshell. I know today men won't listen to the gospel, y'all. First Corinthians 1 and 18 said that preaching of the gospel is foolish to those who are perishing, but to those who believe. Amen. God has given you the power to be saved. You can't be saved without the preaching of God's word. Amen. You got to have the word of God. You can testify, and that's good. You can sing, and that's good. You can pray, and that's good. But the Bible says you can't hear without a preacher. And the preacher can't preach unless he's been sick. And when you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and thou shalt. Shall be saved. Preaching leads to salvation. Then not only salvation, that means your soul is saved. But y'all know what we fall short? We forget that your, your soul gets saved, but your body needs some work 
and your mind is on the other side of town. You have to learn to get God's word in you. And then let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you and speak to you and talk to you. And you commit your way unto him. And then you begin to walk for God. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That, that's why we can come to church and be in church 12 years, 20 years, and there's no change because your mind is still the same. I said, who's the man? Ain't that what I said to you? Who's the man? Uh, in verse 22, uh, Peter said, people of Israel. He's talking specifically to the people of Israel, to the Jews, because at Pentecost, everybody from every nation of Jews were required to come back to the assembly of God. And there were other folk around at the time, but Peter had to talk to the Jews because the Bible said that Jesus came into his own and his own received him not. The Bible also said that the gospel had to go to the Jew first and then it went to the Greek. In other words, it started with Jesus being born in Palestine and then it moved to the uttermost parts of the world. Remember when he told them, go to the upper room and stay there to you and do with power from on high and preach my gospel in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. So the gospel started there and then it began to spread. Amen. And it's still spreading daily. Amen. And the Lord ain't coming back to the last person get the opportunity to hear the gospel. And when that last one is called on the name of the Lord, the dead of the Lord is coming and he's coming back to bring life to soul and judgment to others. I'm going to say this day. Peter stood up. Verse 22. Let's break it down. He said, listen to this. That's what preaching is. We just telling y'all to listen. Give us a few minutes. Let us tell you. Listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God. Y'all see that? Right there that tells you who the man is. Anytime God gives you credit, anytime God acclaims you, anytime God calls you, anytime God saves you, anytime God delivers you, anytime God shows up when you know good and well, you don't deserve His grace, His mercy, and His love, but He just keep on showing up. That's letting that you know that you are acclaimed by God. Jesus of Nazareth was acclaimed by God to do miracles, wonders, and signs. What, what did he do, y'all? They said one time, he, when the first miracle, he stepped up in the wake of the cane of Galilee and he turned water into wine. He told them, said they ran out of wine. Don't worry about it. His mama said, whatever he said, go do it. He said, I'll tell you what, it ain't my time, mama, but because you asked me, let me do this thing for you. So he said, go get your six pots, amen. Fill them up with water, amen. When they filled them up with water, those clay pots was water. They saw the water going in. When they dipped it out, it wasn't nothing but wine, amen. When they they gave it to the governor. He said, hey, this is the best wine I ever heard in my life. In my life. Amen. And he began to drink wine and the party went on. And I'm trying to tell you that one day God saved your soul. Amen. And the blood of Jesus rolls up on the inside of you. And people can say it like this. Ain't no fire. Not the Holy Ghost fire. Go the Holy Ghost. Come. Don't stop. Where the king of Galilee. Then he went one time with a man laying down on a mat. Amen. Had been sick for 38 years. Isn't that right? All the preachers tried to touch him. People tried to help him. But couldn't nobody help him. Jesus walked up to him and said, Do you want to be made whole? Amen. They said, You know I want to be made whole. Jesus said, Take up your bed and walk. That's what the preacher telling you this morning. Whatever you are laying on top of, it's time for you to get up and pick that thing up in the name of Jesus and tell your problem who the man is. Sickness, Jesus is the man. Cancer, Jesus is the man. Diabetes, Jesus is the man. COPD, Jesus is the name. So in the name of Jesus, heaven, we go back. Be the man. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Jesus walked off the boat. Y'all remember? He was sleeping first on the storm. The storm came, the boys he had already trained started tripping out. And we got a storm, uh, don't you care? And that's what we do. He's giving us power, but we're still crying. We're still praying. And you got to get up off your knees. Because faith without works is dead. They said, Jesus, don't you care that we perish? The Lord said, how long should I put up 
with you, you faithless generation. He said, he walked up to the bow of the boats. He looked at the raging sea. And he said, peace be still. Father, with that gas glass and laid on a soaking pillow and went on back to sleep and went on over to the other side, Sister Shadow. When he got over to the other side, a devil was waiting on him. A demonic man was there on the other side, full of devils. Amen. Y'all know what he did? He didn't do like church folk. The Bible says that the devil believes in trouble. Church folk will talk any kind of way in God's house or talk any kind of way to God's people or do anything, but yet we say we know the name of the Lord. When the Lord stepped out the boat, the demonic man in the gallery said, My Lord and my God, why have you come to torment us? Amen. The devils began to speak. Jesus healed him. Amen. When Jesus got the boat, got ready to leave the gallery, they said, The man got in the boat with him. Jesus said, No, no, no. You can't go with me. You need to go back and talk to your family. Amen. Until they get right. And that's what I'm saying. You can't stay in the church. You can't live in the church. You got to go right back to where you came from and tell somebody who the man is. Jesus, man of nine, was a man of credit by God. Miracle signs and wonders. John 6, he had done a whole lot of miracles. Fed 4,000, he come back, so he fed 5,000 more. Everybody was down eating bacon, amen, and hot dogs, whatever they was eating, amen. They was getting full. Fish and low, they full. But when Jesus looked at them and said, eat of my body and drink of my flesh, they missed the whole boat, amen. And they got ready to leave. Matter of fact, the Bible says a lot of them left him. Jesus had a church full of people. As long as he was doing what they wanted him to do, as long as he was doing miracles, signs, and wonders, they was right there in the church. And the minute Jesus went left, and everybody stopped to the man of lost the mind. That man has started tripping, and they started walking away from him. The will of the church back down to 12 again, amen. He looked at the boys and said, where you go? Peter said, Lord, where we going? Amen. you the one that got life in you. Y'all still don't get it? Woman at the well. How many of y'all been the woman at the well? Don't raise your hand. Oh, you see you brave, man. Woman at the well. Had all them boyfriends, amen, trying to make them love her. They wouldn't love her. She was giving up all she had. Now her flower would have started drying up. And she was still trying to hang with the man at the house, amen. Jesus showed up and she said, why are you here? The reason was that she was a Samaritan woman. Jesus was a Jewish man. Jewish men did not a rabbi, especially they talked to women, but especially a Samaritan woman. Jesus broke all rules and laws and walked up beside her and sat down. And she said, what do you want? Uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, give me a drink, amen. Amen. But matter of fact, I got some drink for you. The drink that I have, amen. If you drink this drink right here, you will never thirst again. And she started telling Jesus all her business. Y'all like that church folk. That is something when you go to the grocery store and folk don't even know you and stand in line and start telling you all their business, telling you about their problem. Because there's something on the inside of you that attracts them and they know that you know the man. But they wanted to do what they wanted to do anyway. 
Let, let me say it again. They, they know who it was because they saw everything that it did. I'm talking to somebody who's ready to give up. That's why choir sung the song to you this morning. You fight on. Because when folk come up against you, what it is, they see God blessing you. And they want you to stop doing what you're doing so they can have something to talk about. But you keep on doing what you're doing. Why? Because you have been offended by God. Get the word, get the word. It said this man was handed over by you, by God's deliberate plan. The very person who think they're crushing you ain't doing it to help God help you uh, to preach your assignment. But Brother Haman in the book of Esther, go look at it. He hated Mordecai because he wanted Mordecai to die now. But he didn't understand that at that time Mordecai was God's man. <laughs> yeah, but Mordecai was God's man. And he set up a trap, amen, to try to get Mordecai killed, amen. You know what he said to Mordecai? Uh, when the king said to him, say, if a man uh, blessed you, and if it was a man who you wanted to uh, extinguish and give him something beautiful, what would you do? Haman pumped up himself, righteous just thought they were talking about him, and he told the king, well, if it was me, what I would do, I would throw a parade for him, amen. I would give him a ring, amen. I would put a, a robe on him, amen. I would parade him down the street on a stallion, amen. But he didn't understand that he was talking about Mordecai. Let me, let me run the story back real quick, and I'm going to move on expedition. Now, Mordecai was the one who, uh, uh, he saved the king. He overheard an assassination plot against the king. He go tells the king that he's going to be assassinated. Amen. And they wrote it down in the book of Chronicles. Amen. They wrote it down in the book of Chronicles. One night the king couldn't sleep. Let me say it again. One night the king just so happened he couldn't sleep. So he went back to the book of Chronicles and he started reading. And he saw where Mordecai had given up uh, information to help save his life. He said, hey, who is this man right here called Mordecai? Where did he come from? And the king realized he saved his life. And from that point on, the king sent out the blessing. That's for somebody, amen. You does something for the Lord, amen. He's going to send out the blessing for somebody else going to try to destroy you, but it's not going to work. Okay. They still slow. They're going to be all right. No story short, Mordecai got blessed and Haman was spirit. Bible says that Haman built gallows, amen, and he was going to hang uh, Mordecai and his whole family, amen, and he was going to trick him, amen, but y'all know what happened? God's still working. Said that they had a feast, amen, the king had his wife, she's so beautiful, amen, and said that Mordecai, well, not Mordecai, but Haman went into the feast, amen, and he found out that he thought the king knew about it, and he thought the king was going to kill him, so he went in to plead with the king, but y'all know what happened? When the king came in the room, amen, Amen. This nut is down on his knees, amen. On top of the queen bed for mercy, but y'all know what it looked like when the king walked in. And the king said, I want you to take him, amen. And I want you to put him on the gallows, amen. The same gallows he built for somebody else, he ended up hanging on there with his neck. And I just want to tell somebody in here today, y'all heard the old folks say, if you dig one ditch, you might as well go to dig two, amen. Because God knows. People of Israel, listen, listen, listen. Jesus and Nazareth, I'm going, Jesus and Nazareth, by miracles, signs, and wonders, which God did through him. They saw everything that Jesus did. The mercy of the stoning of the woman, they saw Jesus have mercy. They saw Jesus feed multitudes, they saw Jesus. They saw Jesus touch blinded eyes. They saw Jesus. Matter of fact, y'all remember he healed a man with the withered hand, amen, in the temple. And they got mad because it was the Sabbath day. They didn't rejoice because the person got healed. They got uh, upset over religious rights. The Bible says that Jesus said, I mean, Peter, uh, Paul said, you know. And then now Paul said, it, Peter said it first, that you know, by God's deliberate plan, look what happened. And knowledge you help a wicked man put him to death, nailing him to the cross. Start right there. I want you to know something. Different types of men in this world got good men. The Bible says there's none good, no not one. But when we begin to walk with the Lord, if something happened to us, we become like him. Let's stay with me, y'all. I, I know it's hot. I know you get a little stay with me now, because it's gonna mean something to you after a while. Just because you see somebody in church don't mean they're a good man. Amen. Just because people in the pulpit 
don't make them good men. Just because people got a big family, raising the family, got money now, don't mean they're good men. Let me talk to you now. Bible says that wicked men delivered the Lord up to be nailed on the cross. They're good men and they're wicked men. Don't get it twisted. I'm saying it to somebody because somebody going to come at you wrapped in a package and you're going to think they're one thing and they're another. I'm not talking about romance. They're doing it in business. There's a woman who won $188 million amen, in the lottery. She started blessing the family, gave a tithe to the church, and a religious devil from the pulpit uh, tricked her in a scheme amen, and got her money. Lord have mercy. Y'all still won't pray with me. I'm going home, Deacon Woods, because they don't want to listen to sound doctrine that there are wicked men in the world. Y'all hear me now? And the wicked men put Jesus to death. Y'all see it? So the first thing was the miracles that Jesus did in verse 22, as I get ready to go. In verse 22, it talked about the life of Jesus who lived a sinless life. Y'all get it? Verse 23 talked about the cross of Christ. When he went to Calvary's cross, y'all know where I'm going with it, don't you? He went to Calvary's cross, and his blood was sinless, amen, because his father was not Joseph. Psalm said Joseph was his earthly father, amen, but the Holy Spirit was his father. He had no contamination in him. He had no sin in him, amen. So this Jesus was the man. This Jesus went to the cross, amen. Bible says, but God, y'all see it? Verse 24. But God raised him from the dead by nailing him, nailing it to the cross. Y'all see it right there? As I get ready to go, I'm going to tell you a few things and I'm gone. Dr. King said, ain't no one free until all men are free. Y'all hear me now? In uh, 1776, Continental Congress got together. Y'all listening to me? Continental Congress got together. And they said that, they were, that the states were going to break away from Great Britain. Y'all do know that, right? Then it came back June 19th, the Declaration of Independence talks about freedom. But in the Constitution, black men were still three-fifths of a person. So everybody still wasn't free. Joe Biden signed the bill, didn't he? That said that Juneteenth was a national holiday. Well, June 19th, 1865, we're talking about Juneteenth, ain't we? When everybody was free. Uh, and, 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 and enslaved people who had their part in history was supposed to be free also. Am I right about it? But in Galveston, Texas, there were some folks who still didn't know that they was free. Amen. Then they sent a man by to let them know that they was all so free. Amen. And so now as we get ready to celebrate Juneteenth, amen, and we celebrate July 4th with the thing is we all celebrate it together. Let me talk to you for a little while. There's a whole lot of men and women. 2,021 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross to free you from the guilt of sin, from the penalty of sin. Yes, he did. And people still don't know, amen, that he died for your sin. See, I stopped by to tell you that he died, amen. I stopped by to tell you that he rose, amen. And that's what you ought to do. Go back when you leave here and let somebody know who the man is. Let them know if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, amen. Well, what I mean, he's the man, amen. He's the man that stepped out of eternity into time, amen. He's the man that stepped into Bethlehem in the womb of her Mary, amen. He's the man. He's the man that stood in the temple at 12 years old, preaching the teachers and doctors and lawyers, telling them about the Father, and his mama came. He said, I must be about my father's business. He is the man. He is the man who turned water into wine. Well, now, through that, I had one more miracle. But what the great miracle was, that he raised Lazarus from the dead. So he stepped into Bethlehem and said, Lazarus, come forth, amen. Then he turned and went to God's Baptist Hill, amen. He stepped up on the cross and he died until death time. He stepped down. But the Bible said that the step of a good man, y'all hear me now? The step of a good man, a holy God of Lord. I'm so glad one day that he stepped into my life. I'm so glad today that he saved my soul. I'm so glad today that the hands I did for him. I'm so glad today that he is the man. Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, he is the man. Jesus is the man. 
Doing what the church is doing. He's the man. Sick. He's the man. He can still heal. He can still save. No matter how far you've gone from the peaceful soul, listen to me, y'all. He's the man. Don't throw your children away because they make a mistake. Remember, you made a mistake too, but that man. Lord, have mercy. He's the man. And the end of this thing said that death couldn't hold him. I'm gone when I tell you. Said that Jesus died on the cross. I'm gone, y'all. He died. Y'all hear me? He's dead and death, hell, and the grave are having a party. Because Jesus is dead. Y'all know when folks think you're dead, they have a party. You think that everybody loves you, but some folks have a party. Because they think you're gone, everybody. But the God raised you back up and put you right back in their face. Ain't God good? Jesus died. They have a party. But say that the devil was wearing they man. So they went to his hip and said, hey, have you still got it? That Friday night that the devil said, the hip told the devil, I got him, don't worry about it. Side was real quiet. So the devil came back and said, are you sure you got it? So the devil said, the hip told the devil, I got it. But they said Friday night, there was a rumbling going on, they man. And the hip got afraid, they man. And he backed up to go tell the devil what was going on. When he got to the devil, the devil was already trembling. So what's wrong with you? The devil came up to go see what was going on. Said the soldiers around the tomb was asleep. <laughs> and the stone was rolling away. And the angel of the Lord was sitting on the stone. And the imp was sitting there with his head in his head. And the devil said, what's wrong? Said the imp said, I had it. I had it on Friday. I had it on Saturday. But early Sunday morning, sun started happening. Earth started quaking. Stone started rolling. And I heard somebody say, I'm here with all power in my hand. I'm trying to tell you that he's the man. He got power to set you free. He got power to make the walk right. He got power to make the walk right. He got power. Holy Ghost power. Deliverance power. Save the power. Nobody like my God. He got power. 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 All power. All power. Son of man, 
how can you bless me and like that be merciful to them the way they act? Y'all know why? Because he was the man. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. God, I'm praying for every heart under the sound of my voice. Because we understand that you are the man. John 14 and 14 said I could call on the name of that man. I could ask whatever it is I need. That in the name of that man, I could be healed, delivered, and set free because of that man. God, I thank you for that man who saved my soul. Thank you, Lord, for the man who made me whole. Thank you for the man who put me back in my right mind. God, I just want to thank you for that man. I thank you for everybody in the congregation, God, who called out upon you because they realized that you are that man. I thank you, Lord, that in the hospital, you still the man. At the funeral home, God, you, you still the man. At the graveyard, God, you, you still the man. In the church, Lord, you, you still the man. In our homes, God, you, you still the man. Education, God, you still the man. Government, God, you still the man. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I'm praying for those under the sound of my voice, be it Facebook Live, or be it right here in the sanctuary. Because wherever they are, Lord, you still the man. You sit high and you look low because you the man. I'm asking God for heal bodies. There's so many sick of cancer, so many sick of COVID, so many sick of diabetes. So many sick, God, lung disease, blood disease, skin disease. God, I'm asking you now that you say it at the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, because he heals the man. God, I ask you now to bless the part of our church who are not here right now, who may be ailing, who may be sick. God, go by the hospitals and touch somebody. If you got to go with us, God, send us, God, and we'll go to touch them and help you raise them up in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Go by hospice and comfort somebody, God, who has the death battle, who may be on their last, God, we ask you to touch them because you are the man. We still not upset, Lord, because you said to be after for the body to be present with the Lord. So, God, you are that man. We thank you, Lord, now that we need you right now like we never needed you before, Lord. Help our children today, God, and there'll be better men and women. Help our children today, God, so that the world won't overtake them. Help our grandbabies, God, until they become men and women of God. Help our great grandbabies, God, until they grow up to be men and women of God. Thank you, God, for using everybody in the church. Thank you, God, for being a bridge over trouble water. Thank you, God, for being that man. Thank you, God, for the power of your Holy Spirit. How you keep us. How you bless us. God, we love you today because you are that man. Praying, God, for somebody here today who's been trying for a long time. Ask you, God, to open up our ears who will stop up and eyes, God, that are seeing them. I'm asking you, God, in the name of Jesus, it will help those who can't digest their food well. Praying, God, for those who may be in relationship problems. You know why, God, I'm calling on you? Because the Bible said that you are the man. And you told us that whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We bind all sicknesses, all disease, all things that will try to hinder your work, God. We bind it right now in the name of Jesus. And we release every fruit of your spirit to operate in your church here at Archer's Road, United Church of Christ. Let your love fall down on us, God, until we cry out that you are the man. Let self-control come on us until we understand that you are the man. Let mercy rest rule and bow on us till we understand, God, that you are the man. And I want you to walk in peace because he's man. Y'all hear me? I will. Because he is the man. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless the offering that we've taken up. I pray, God, you will bless the hands of the one who sold it. You say in your word, God, that recalls uh, we sold and our cheerful gifts, God, that you will bless and cover our homes. We, we believe.
believe to God and we trust you and we're so in love so brothers and sisters would have uh, things that they don't have and that your church would have meetings to be able to do the things that we're supposed to do for your name. So we ask you God to bless the hope that we receive today. Bless the hands of the one who brought it, the hands of the one who collected it, and may it be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. Now my prayer for you is this, may the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, ruin, and abide his form now and forevermore. Let the faithful God say amen. 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 amen.